More than 400 billion cups consumed each year. The second most popular beverage in the world only to water, over half of the population in the United States has a cup of joe every day. Coffee is more than a tasty energy boost to start the day. It is a part of culture and life. You may find it a surprise that coffee had a large impact on history changing events, including the French Revolution, the American slave trade, and World War I. So what is the history of coffee? Let's find out. Coffee originates from Ethiopia. Legend has it that one day a goat herder from Kaffa named Kaudi was herding his goats. The goats began to jump around, almost dancing, and bleat loudly, which was a strange behaviour for his herd. Kaudi found that a small shrub was the source of the excitement. Deciding to try the bright red berries for himself, Kaudi also felt the coffee cherries' energising effects. Amazed at this discovery, Kaudi decided to share the berries with the monks. Kaudi did not receive the warmest of welcomes at the monastery. One monk referred to his coffee beans as the devil's work, and tossed them into the fire. The aroma that wafted up from the roasting beans caught the monk's attention. After removing the beans from the fire and crushing them to extinguish the embers, they attempted to preserve them in an ewer filled with hot water. After trying it, the monks experienced the uplifting effects for themselves. They vowed to drink it daily as an aid to their religious devotions and to keep them awake during prayers. The Aromo people, a tribe who have lived in the Kaffa region for hundreds of years, were the first to come into contact with coffee. They originally used the beans to produce produce coffee snack bars. Coffee plants were brought across the Red Sea to the city of Mocha in modern day Yemen, specifically Coffea Arabica, natural to Ethiopia and the most popular coffee to this day, equating to 60% of the global production. Mocha became home to the first coffee plantations in the early 15th century. Here, coffee as we know it was born, roasting, grinding and brewing to create liquid gold. Here, Sufa monks prepared an infusion of coffee cherry leaves to stay awake and pray through the night. By the 16th century, coffee had spread to many parts of the Ottoman Empire, including Constantinople. It became so important that Turkish law made it legal for a woman to divorce her husband if he failed to provide her with sufficient coffee. From here, the first coffee houses or cafes were created. Cafes gave the Islamic world a social space outside of their home. People could share and discuss ideas together. Alcohol consumption in the Ottoman Empire was prohibited so coffee became the perfect substitute for alcohol. It was given the name Kave, meaning wine of Arabia. Some rulers did not like the cafes, not because they didn't like coffee, but because people were informing themselves and thinking. Cafes were banned for some time in Mocha and Constantinople, however the ban was eventually lifted. The early 17th century saw Muslim coffee's introduction to Christian Europe. Through the work of Venetian merchants, it met with strong resistance from the Catholic Church especially by the Pope's councilman, who asked Pope Clemente VIII to declare the black beverage the bitter invention of Satan. This devil's drink is so delicious, we should cheat the devil by baptising it. From here, coffee spread throughout Europe. By 1660, London's coffee houses had become an integral part of its social culture. The general public dubbed coffee houses penny universities. London's coffee houses offered customers a great deal more than hot cups of coffee. The entrance fee of one penny allowed them to benefit from the intellectual conversation that surrounded them. Before we had the internet, we had coffee houses. Many men shared stories, news and information. It became a popular meeting place that fostered serious discussion and debate against the rulers of the time. 1789, coming out of the Café du Foy, young journalist Camille Desmoulon mounted a table and began a frenzied speech. He played on the passions of the mob that when it ended, he and his followers marched away from the café and began suit of revolution. The Bastille fell two days later. Coffee quickly became precious and coffee plants much sought after. Big European empires like Holland and France tried to grow coffee in their own territories, far from the tropical climates where it was already known to best thrive. To preserve their monopoly, the Arabian coffee traders intentionally made export beans infertile by parching or boiling them before export to Europe. By 1699, the Dutch governor in India helped 
smuggle coffea arabica seedlings to the Indonesian island of Java to cultivate, laying the foundation for Indonesia's coffee plantations. Over time, the Dutch would use slavery to establish coffee plantations in Sumatra, Bali, Sulawesi, Timor, and Sri Lanka. Mid 18th century, the French bought the coffee plant to be cultivated in the West Indian island San Domingue, as well as sugar. San Domingue grew to be the wealthiest colony in the French Empire. It produced 60% of the coffee imported to Europe at the time. The slave system at San Domingue was regarded as one of the harshest in the Americas, with high levels of both mortality and violence. To supply the plantation system, French owners imported almost 800,000 Africans to the colony. After many years of slave revolts, San Domingue successfully separated itself from French colonialism and slavery, becoming an independent country. One of the only countries to do so during the slave trade. Today it's known as Haiti. By 1800, Brazil had taken over as the world's leading producer in coffee and still does today. Five million African slaves were shipped to Brazil for labor. As a result of this, Brazil was one of the last countries of the Western world to abolish slavery in 1888. That's 23 years after the United States. By the 1920s, Brazil was exporting close to a billion pounds of coffee annually. 80% of the world's production. This incredible production made coffee an everyday affordable commodity in Western society, albeit at an enormous cost on the people and the environment that Brazil still struggles with today. George Constant Lewis Washington, American inventor of Belgian descent, developed the first commercially sold instant coffee in 1910, just before the First World War. During this time, instant coffee became incredibly profitable. The US military quickly purchased loads of coffee to fuel the men at war. However, the taste of instant coffee still left much to be desired. In 1938, Nescafe solved the problem, producing a better tasting instant coffee. The process involved drying equal amounts of coffee extract and soluble carbohydrates, instantly becoming very popular. By the start of the Second World War, instant coffee is again very popular among the soldiers and better tasting. Coffee today has come a long way from its humble origins in Ethiopia to its mass production in Brazil and widespread popularity in the world today. Let me know in the comments if you learned something new. Remember to subscribe for more insightful history videos.